Here's a good word for the morning. Hebrews 4.12 says, The word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword, penetrating even to divide soul and spirit, judging the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Maybe you uh, are familiar with this, this guy that I'm going to tell you about. Hundreds of years ago, a young German monk desperately wanted to find relief for his tormented soul, and he prayed and he studied and he went on pilgrimage to Rome, but, but still he, he didn't find the peace that he was hoping for. And finally, when studying Paul's letter to the Romans, the eyes of his heart were opened. Romans 117, the righteous will live by faith. Anybody know who this guy is? Martin Luther, yes. Now, Martin Luther is, uh, is a good example of one who struggled and was tormented. And, you know, we're talking this morning about mental health and about anxiety and depression and those things that, that we all deal with. And the Word of God provides answers to our struggles so this morning, as we, we dive into the Word of God, as we seek to, to have God speak to us about our own uh, reality, of our own struggles with our humanity, that God would reveal to us His Word, His life-giving Word. Let's pray together. Glorious God, thank you for the opportunity we have to, to gather in your name, to proclaim you above all things, to set aside those things that, that we wrestle with, and to be renewed and refreshed in your spirit. Bless this gathering and each one, Lord, in your holy and precious name. Amen. morning. Let us stand together as we enter into worship. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. The Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let us sing together. Come and let us go on the mountain of the Lord.
Let us share the word from Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God, listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth, I will call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Even to the rock, I desire enough. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the foe. I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. Let us pray. Jehovah Rapha, I am convinced that healing in all its forms ultimately comes from you. Healing of our mind, body, and soul, your sacrifice on the cross made possible this great reversal. As I trust in your divine plan, I place my hope for health and wholeness into your loving hands. Amen. Let's sing hymn number 479, Jesus, Lover of My Soul. Let's affirm our faith and read the Apostles' Creed, and it's in your hymnal 881. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, and ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. Thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Catholic, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints. 
saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Good for a moment before we have our scripture reading though we're going to bring the kids uh sunday schools do we have any children's offering this morning to bring up not yet you do good come on up and any any other of the kids that want to come on up for a moment we're just beginning our Christian education season, of course, and um, so we're in the early stages of gathering our offerings. You, you can go ahead and grab one of these. Obviously, part of the reason we do this is to develop these practices, to develop these attitudes of God being first. God owns our money. And our first responsibility is to him. And then with that, he gives us so much more above and beyond that we can do and use to his glory however we see fit and however he guides us. So thank you for, yeah, you want to put it right in there? Thank you for bringing the Sunday school money to your offerings up this morning. And uh, we're going to bless it before we send you back. And you can take a, a treat here too. So God, thank you for, for these kids. Thank you for those promptings in each one of us to return to you, to give you praise, and to give you those things that are reminders that you are good to us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Good morning. All right. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanks, giving, with thanksgiving. Present your request to God, and the peace of God, which tr transcends all understanding will guard your heart, hearts, and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, right? admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, Put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Thank you, Logan. Well, let's pray together as we start this time of delving into God's word. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So every once in a while, we uh, kind of delve into to this topic of, of mental health. And it's defined, mental health is defined as um, the foundation of emotions, of thinking, of communication, of learning, of resilience, of self-esteem. And good mental health is vital to our relationships, personal uh, relationships, and to our emotional well-being. And it contributes to the wholeness of, of the community that we're part of of and to society. So now kids, I'm at number one. I numbered them this week <laughs> for our youth. Mental illness is a health condition involving changes to emotion, thinking, or behavior. According to the American 
Psychiatric Association, nearly one in five persons have some form of mental illness. And I have contended, and you've heard me contend this before, that uh, I believe it's 100%. We all have, in some shape, form, uh, where 100% of us have a mental illness. Uh, one psychologist has said, everyone is crazy. It's just a matter of degree. So yeah, we're, we're all into, to some degree. And I put it this way, and this is how I kind of fleshed this out. Um, the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, things were pretty good, right? Things, genetics were pretty good at that time. And a lot of things have happened since that time. And I feel that the farther, or I should say, because of the fall, uh, we are all affected by mental illness. We've all sinned. We've all sh fallen short of God's glory and his intended norm for our lives. We've, we've all deviated from God's will. Can you agree? Any amens? Okay. And when we deviate from God's intended desires for our lives, we open the door to those distorted emotions, those distorted thinkings, those distorted behaviors, um, those three things that are foundational to mental health, good mental health. Because of sin, uh, both our intentional, when we choose to sin, or, or because we are just by nature, uh, because of the fall, part of the flesh. We are all out of sync with God. We, for the most part, become aware of that through the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Anybody ever been prompted by the Holy Spirit that you're out of sync with God? Raise it. No, you don't have to raise your hand. I know what the answer is. Mental illness might be described uh, like a feeling uh, when we're getting dizzy. Now, I hate getting dizzy, but I know some people like getting dizzy. They even intentionally get dizzy. under the age of 12. 12, yeah. Yeah, we won't ask. Maybe, yeah. Um, you know something isn't right when, you're, when you've gotten dizzy and you don't function well, you don't function the way you should normally, and some people like that. Um, but just being dizzy, mental illness, um, it, it kind of reminds me of that. It gets old in a hurry, and you seriously want to get off of that merry-go-round at some point, right? There are some startling statistics. From 29, uh, 2009 to 17, the number of high schoolers who contemplated suicide rose 25%. The number of teens diagnosed with clinical depression grew 37% from 2005 to 2014, and, and girls at a much higher rate than boys. The average rate of self-harm increased 62% since 2009 among teenage girls. Among 10 to 14-year-old girls, self-harm is up 189% since 2010. Now these statistics, I'm not telling you those so that you think there is no hope or that there is no help, but it's to make us aware of the struggles that people are having these days. We talked with the kids, the youth last night, how, uh, you know, things weren't easy for us as teenagers, but we know that it is much harder to be a teenager these days than however many years ago it is for you. Mental illness hits teenagers and adults in many ways. Mental health and well-being of people of all ages, it's at a critical point, I believe, in our society. And I, again, I think uh, that might be pointing to the Return of Christ, maybe in our lifetime, I don't know. None of us know, but Jesus is coming back. The evidence is clear, and most agree. All of us deal with mental health and the issues of mental health in one way or another. And if you don't think that our society realizes this, question number two, Sauk Prairie School District was awarded $4.66 million federal, uh, dollar federal grant to address the mental health needs of students. So it's not just me saying that this is 
a big concern for us. Mental illness is a term used to encompass many different disorders. Uh, anxiety, depression are the most common. We know about post-traumatic stress disorder, phobias, um, all, all sorts of forms. And number three, some factors are physical, such as brain abnormalities, hormonal imbalances, and neurotransmitter impairments. Even things like nutrition, exercise, and sleep. Sleep, yes, that is important too. They affect, it affects our mental health. Some mental illnesses are brought on by traumatic events or abuse in childhood, and sometimes it's unhealthy behaviors that contribute most to our mental well-being. Some of those behaviors can be very hard to break. Some become addictions. And God speaks to those things for us and to us. All of us deal, as I said, in varying degrees of mental wellness. Some from genetics, some from choices that we make. Sadly, many young persons pursue um, some radical treatments. Now, not everyone's going to agree with me, but I would include, um, among other things, and this doesn't make this one issue the major issue, but the uh, transgender ideation, the gender dysphoria, I would include that in this discussion. Um, sadly, many young persons pursue radical treatments uh, to attempt their bodies uh, to, to attach or to match their bodies to their perceived identity. Many with uh, irreversible life-altering consequences. And, and the reason I'm speaking of this today is, is because of a podcast from Focus on the Family that we just listened to this week that dealt with that particular issue. This person who had... Uh, radical treatments done as a younger person um, that she now regrets. And she spoke of, of the, the counseling and the medical uh, advice that she received as a younger person um, well before she was at, her brain was at an age where she should be making those kind of decisions. Um, not only the medical community, community but even this article spoke of parents who are pushing these things on their kids at a very young age. These radical choices that happen long before uh, our brains are developed to a place where we can make those kind of decisions are just um, not helpful, I don't think. I don't think they're helpful. Not only that, the evidence quoted, suggested that 70 to 90 percent of, of gender dysphoric kids will self-correct to gender identity of birth by the time they're 19 years old. And I think these are things that can be helpful to us as we're counseling one another and talking to one another about the various mental health struggles that all of us have. These are just ones that are prominent right now. As I said, there are many different factors that contribute to to mental health, biological factors, trauma, medical conditions, chemical imbalances, drugs, alcohol, and loneliness. These things all play a factor in, in our mental and emotional well-being. Number four, but I would argue that the main factor, the main factor for all of us affecting all persons is the anxiety and the depression that comes from being estranged from God. I think that is a scriptural, biblical um, approach to dealing with any of our mental health needs. That we are estranged from God. And, and because we don't then exercise a measure of faith that God gives to us to cast all our cares upon him and surrender our lives to his sovereignty, we, pro, we promote or we prolong those, those sufferings and those challenges. Colossians 1. Colossians 1.21. 
Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now you, he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. We are all alienated from God and we need that act of God's grace on our behalf to reconcile us through faith in Jesus Christ. Now, because I know some will take this, what I just said, to say, well, the pastor doesn't believe there are chemical imbalances in people and medical and biological issues and traumas and, and societal risk factors at play. Pastor's just saying it's all spiritual. Well, that's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is the one common factor and the first point of addressing uh, gives us all that propensity towards a disordered thinking and passions is that rebellion and that estrangement from God. And therefore, if I were writing a prescription, and I'm not a doctor, so don't quote me as being a, an, an expert on any of these things except for what God is revealing to us, if I were writing a prescription for the treatment of mental illness, I would start with these three things. And this is number five. I would start with repenting of your sins. I would start, number two, with uh, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. And I would say the prescription would include surrendering to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Repenting, believing, and trusting in the Lordship of Jesus Christ as a prescription for the cure. Mental wellness is not just an issue of disorder to distressed mind. It's about a disruption in that relationship that we have with God, between us and God. It's a disruption of that shalom, that intended uh, peace and tranquility that God originally intended for his people. And that comes about by living in right relationship with him. It's about the disruption of the life God desires and wills for us. And, and Psalm, uh, whoops, Psalm 23. Yes, it's 930. You can look at Psalm 23 while we're excusing the kids and the teachers and we're blessing them as they go. The kids pre-K through fifth grade are excused to go with their teachers now. Glorious God, thank you. Thank you once again for these precious souls. Thank you for entrusting them to our care and to our teaching. And we pray, Lord, that you would bless them and speak to their hearts and their minds this morning. In your name, Jesus, amen. Okay, here's a question for you. Do you think that Christians suffer from mental illness? Yes, I hope if you've got nothing else that you realize that we all, that we all suffer from mental illness in, a, in some degree. Now someone will say, well, pastor doesn't believe that real Christians suffer from mental illness. Wrong. Christians are not immune from mental illness, from depression, from anxiety, from the phobias that we mentioned. Number six, chemicals and biological imbalances in the body, traumas of various types, societal risk factors affect Christians as well as non-Christians alike. You know, sometimes we even refuse um, to seek treatment, to, to seek counseling, to seek medical interventions for our mental struggles or therapy because, because then we consider it a lack of faith that we, we aren't measuring up in the faith category. However, most of us will accept the fact that Christians get broken bones, right? Christians get cancer. You agree with that? Uh, Christians get sick. Okay, I think we've covered everybody, haven't we? 
Yet, sometimes we think that real Christians are somehow immune from mental illness. It's a part of our makeup. This belief denies the truth that all human beings, since the fall, are living in a broken world. And so we fall into that condemnation sometimes that the enemy wants to say, you're not living up, or you, you aren't quite there, or that kind of thing. But we can't come to that conclusion if we look at what the scripture tells us about God's people. Even Jesus was overcome by sorrow. Paul knew that it was his struggle against the fightings within that he was dealing with. And we even have the book of Psalms that, that is just full of this expressed deep sorrow and depression and angst and anxiety and fears, right? We should do what we can to, to avail ourselves of the help that when we need help, when things are getting out of control, we need to seek the help that is available to us. As I said before, it begins with our relationship with God. That's, to me, the beginning of that prescription from God. And it extends to working with those that God has gifted with those areas of mental health, uh, physical health, whatever area it is, especially those that base their treatments and therapies on biblical truth. We should avail ourselves of those helps when we need them. Not only that, but number seven, just as we have compassion on those who are physically ill, we must also have compassion on those who are mentally ill. Just as we seek help when we're physically ill, we should also help seek help when we're struggling, when we're struggling with our thoughts, our emotions, our behaviors. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Psalm 23 tells us. And another couple of scriptures that I think are helpful from 2 Corinthians 10 is taking demolishing arguments and every pretension that set us up against the knowledge of God and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. That isn't always easy. How, I'm going to ask you, how do you put this verse into practice? How do you take captive those thoughts when you're struggling and you know something's going off on your mind? We had a moment before church this morning. It's like, got to bring this back in and, and surrender it to God. How about you? How do you do that? Anybody else? You're just agreeing with me that that's what we should do, right? We should surrender it to God. Put it on the altar of God's grace. If you don't, what happens? It just gets bigger and it gets more control, right? I love that. I can't do it. Take it. That's, that's where we're at when we come to God. This is out of my control. This is out of my ability. God, this is yours. The other verse from James 4, 7. Therefore, submit to God and resist the devil and he will free from you. Flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Scripture talks at times about the battle that we're in. And I believe that the battle is oftentimes not just against the flesh, but against our minds and the struggles that we deal with. So one simple help when we're struggling, is to ask God to take authority in our lives of those thoughts. Many of us believe that right thinking promotes right action, that pursuing and being guided by moral and just thoughts 
will tend to bring about moral and just actions. And I happen to believe that. It's sort of that kind of thing, garbage in, garbage out principle. The thing that you let your mind uh, run with becomes this much bigger challenge to, to deal with. If we only put garbage in our body or in our mind, the result will likely be an unfit body and an unfit mind. Any amens to that? Okay. And vice versa, we need to be intentional about, intentional about feeding our minds with holy soul food, which takes us back to our scripture passage from this morning. Rejoicing in the Lord always means that we are starting with honor, we're starting with reverence, uh, praise to God. The Lord is near is a reminder to us that God is not distant. He is not uninterested in your life, but that he is truly concerned about you and your well-being. Don't be anxious about anything. When I think about it in my own life, I become anxious when I don't trust Jesus to be in control of things in my life. Anxiety re re results from instability when, when I li lack that confidence in whatever matter, whatever issue. When I lack that confidence that God is in control and that he has my best interest at heart. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, once again, that tranquility, that shalom, that peace that God wants us to inhabit and to embrace as children of him, um, will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. God is the foundation of truth. He is the author and finisher of our faith. And he is the one who establishes sanity and peace of our minds. Finally, brothers, whatever is, and sisters, excuse me. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is Whatever is, whatever is, whatever is, whatever is, if anything is excellent or praise worthy, what? If anything is excellent or praise worthy, think about these things. Let our minds dwell on those things of God and His goodness, rather on those things that seek to do us harm and drag us away from God. And in verse 9, and the God of peace will be with you. So number 8, the best prescription for good mental health and wholeness begins with reorientation of our lives to God. With reorientation of our lives to God and living into that great transformation, the renewing of our minds that God wants for all of us. So he can order our lives and bring us peace. So I'm going to finish by reminding, reminding you, any of you who have ever struggled with mental, your mental health, I'm here to remind you that you are not hopeless, you are not helpless, because there is a God who is alive and who loves you. That's number nine. Say it with me. You are not hopeless, you are not helpless, because there is a God who is alive and loves you. And you all are a part of a community who loves God and who loves you and is here to help you.
That's a good reminder. And they've heard it not just from you today, but they've heard it from the rest of the church, right? Absolutely. Thank you for that reminder. Let's pray. Glorious God, capture our minds, capture our hearts. Reveal yourself to us anew today as you remind us of your love for each one of us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, let's go into our time of prayer and petition. Well, let's raise our voices, our hearts, and our praises to God. God, we're so grateful that you don't just let us wander on our own, but you call us each by name. You call us to surrender to you, the the glorious God of the universe. And God, as we cry out to you, as we cry out to you for, for healing, for restoration, for your presence, Lord, for your peace, that you would answer according to your good and perfect will in each of our lives and for the others that we lift up. We pray for those who are dealing with medical issues, with the ongoing struggles of life. God, that your peace might be in the middle of it. God, we're praying for those events of the life of this body and and for the recognition and the acknowledgement that first of all comes from you that we have a purpose, that we uh, have a mission. So God, we pray that you would provide your spirit that uh, everyone who comes into contact with everyone in here uh, would know that they have encountered the living God, the spirit of God that abides in his believers, in your believers. Thank you for each one. We pray to you, Father, that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to stand and sing together near to the heart of God, number 472.
I do invite you to receive God's blessing. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you, he is faithful, and he will do it. Go now in that love, that joy, that peace of Christ to love God and serve his world. Amen. And as a reminder, there are copies of the new bylaws of the Blackhawk Bethlehem Church here in the narthex if anybody wants a copy of that. Otherwise, go in peace, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm.